Okay, hello. Thank you. <laughs> Th thank you for the very modest <laughs> welcome. Yeah, all right. So, wait, let me just figure this out. Um, can anyone, could I see the video just to make sure it works? Because we were trying our best to set it up. Yay. Wait, then I know. All right, cool. So, anyway, yeah. So, I do a lot of design front end and a couple of back end, actually. Um, I guess this works is fine. Yeah, and uh, I work with a couple of people, very talented people in this room, and some big projects, some small. You guys have beer? Beer is cool. Uh, <laughs> and uh, the thing about it is, uh, the, hard, the hard part is there's a point where in projects just get really, really complicated. Like sometimes it would just be me and Sam working on something then let's say Sam needs to, you know, take a break and get someone else in, and they'd be totally confused at what we made, right? Has that ever happened to you guys as CSS developers, CSS designers? Yeah, so actually for me, you know, I'm a very forgetful person, and uh, this always happens to me. Like, I make something, I come back to it, and think, like, what the fuck did I do six months ago, man? Does that ever happen to you guys? Yeah. It's more so with CSS, right? Because CSS is kind of, doesn't have this ecosystem of how to do things. You know, you go to like Google and type in like how to do JavaScript properly or whatever, and there's like a million results, but I don't know if the same goes for CSS, right? You go to, Java, go to Google, look for like JavaScript style guide, and you get style guides from Airbnb, from Google, from Uber, basically all these companies selling you how to do things. But in CSS, it's not quite the same, right? So here's the thing. CSS is kind of complicated. We think it's complicated. And, uh, but the thing with CSS is it seems simple. But once you get into it, it seems complicated. Does anyone have that feeling? Yeah, so you know, for example, you have something like this, which is like a very normal I guess we could call it a block, a component, view, uh, whatever it is really. Like, you know, you'd see this in mobile, mobile sites, yeah, you know, or even desktop sites. It's a basic card, what they call it, right? So if you're going to do this, it's very, very intuitive. You know, you have a div or something for every little piece, right? This is probably how you would do it, or anyone else would do it, Deva. And inside that image div, you have an image. Inside the heading, you have headings, like a title and a description in the form of H2, because, you know, we're semantic like that. A paragraph inside the description, then you have some sort of button, right, somewhere in the actions. And this is, this is something we call a semantic HTML approach, and it's really huge. Like maybe t last 10 years, you'd hear the buzzword semantic markup a lot, right? I don't know, I've heard that a lot, and I don't hear that much now. But anyway, semantic is how we intuitively and naturally write markup, right? And uh, when we style that semantic markup, we try to do it as intuitively as possible as well, right? So you start with CSS. Uh, you guys familiar with what this does, right? It, this is basically CSS saying the class photo card has the following appearance styles. And then if you have something like SAS or less or any of those new CSS magics, you know, you would be able to do nesting like this, right? Is this still familiar to you guys? No, not really. Ang tawag po dyan ay CSS, mga kaibigan. No, so you could... Uh, nest styles, which you would probably do, you know, in a setting like that, because that's how you write HTML, right? So it naturally follows, that's how you would write your CSS as well. You know, I, and, uh, I, <laughs> yeah, I hear that, you know, this is, this gets really, really unwieldy. You know, sorry, I keep using that term unwieldy. You guys know what unwieldy means? You know, it, yeah, imagine like a guy with a sword that is two times taller than he is, and he can't wield it, that's unwieldy. This is what I feel with that CSS, you know, like I'm handling something that's bigger than me. 
which sucks. But, you know, it, it's, that's why I think it's a naive approach. It's how we seem to intuitively do it, but at some point it just becomes unnatural, becomes unwieldy, it becomes bigger than us. You know, and that sucks. Anyway, it kind of ends up something like this once you, you know, put it all together. Does this look familiar? <laughs> Hallelujah! Right, okay. Yeah, so, there are a couple of ways that you could solve this. And a lot of people have gone through this and said, like, yeah, there's a better way to do this, you know? And, but the thing is, it just, CSS feels complicated. It's not really complicated. Anyway, it doesn't have to be complicated. My name is Rico. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter with that little name right there. And I'm here to talk about how to make your CSS a little better without having to lose your sanity along the way. Anyway, yeah, so CSS and uh, markup, right? So right now, this still looks kind of familiar to you, right? This is basically what we had a while ago, just put together in a different way. Basically, it's a component with stuff, which also has stuff. So now your CSS is styling that component with stuff and stuff inside it, and then it looks easy to read like this, but you know, in reality, this is probably like 400 lines of CSS. Oh, it kind of sucks. Anyway, yeah, a couple of people have been solving this. Uh, there's the logo for something called BEM, or Block Element Modifier. Have you guys heard of it? Uh, for us who haven't, so BEM stands for Block Element Modifier, which is basically the three basic concepts of what it is. And the way they say how you should write BEM is there's a way you should write your class names. It's a format that looks something like this. You know, like uh, the left side is the block, which is like the main thing, which is your photo card. And two dashes and then whatever it is inside it. So that's the element. So you're thinking in blocks and elements inside it. So in this case, you have a photo card with a photo, with a heading, with a subheading, and so on and so forth. And you make class names like this. And in, you know, in SAS, you would write it something like this, which is still very clean. The problem is it kind of looks dirty oh, in your HTML. I don't know if you guys could see this, but let me just try to bring it all. You know, and uh, the CSS looks clean, but the markup looks dirty. You know, so it's one headache replaced by something, another headache. Then we have other things as well that try to solve the problem. Uh, bootstrap. Um, I don't know. I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys, if you've done any sort of design CSS work, you've heard of this word before, and uh, a lot of people use this thing called Bootstrap, which is a library of components. It has like a whole bunch of hundreds of components, and they have a way of organizing those components. And it looks kind of like this. They have, so you have a panel. So a panel has a head and body, has a panel head, panel body. Uh, a button has different uh, variations, like a primary button and a small button, something like that. And if we were to take the bootstrap conventions and apply it to what we have, it would look something like this, which is pretty much kind of the same as BEM if you think about it, just different, you know, just using one dash instead of two. Anyway, so it seems like there's kind of a, a trade off here. You could write easy CSS, but you could write, you know, maintainable CSS, but dirty markup like BEM. Or you could write Easy markup, but hard to maintain CSS, you know? So and if you were to graph it, it would be something like this, right? So the question is, is there somewhere that is kind of like a middle point between the two? Is there a way to make a compromise between clean CSS and clean markup? Because it seems like when you have clean markup, you have dirty CSS and the other way around. So anyway, so what if there's like a reasonable compromise between the two? Well, I was asking myself this, and uh, this is the kind of question that we would tackle when we were working on projects. And I came up with a, s a couple of guidelines that just kind of naturally evolved. And I'm hoping to share with you guys what those are. And it's really, really simple. Uh, let's say, for example, you have photo card. Image, heading, description, such and such, right? So if in your markup, 
is kind of like the same as the naive example, wherein you have a component called photocard and little elements inside it. Same way. So, that thing is called uh, RSCSS. You could check it out in this website. Uh, but anyway, let me show you what that means. You would style that same markup like this. So that's photo card with a greater than sign than image, and so on and so forth, the same convention for the other elements. And if you were to write it using SAS, it looks like this, which is still very clean. So the magic there is your, your markup looks clean, and your CSS would look clean. You know, uh, it's not as simple as the naive approach, but you know, it's a reasonable compromise, I think, to make things a little more maintainable. So you should always think in components. So the way this works is you should always think in little components. Like you make it so that everything in your site is a little component. So you know, if you would have, yeah, well, okay, I can't really see it, but yeah. Uh, so here's what I mean by that. So you have a button, for example, right? That's like a button box. So that is a component. And your component could have variations. So you could have a small button box by just adding a class name called small. Or you could have a bigger component like this, which has other components inside it. So we took that small button, and you put it inside a bigger component, which is called callout box. So basically, you're just making components inside other components, inside other components, and so on. And your components would have elements inside it. So it's not a new idea, because this is how BEM works. This is kind of like how Bootstrap works, or Smack CSS, or any other thing. So it's really not new. But it, the, the rules are very simple. You just here's, it's a really, really small thing, but it makes a lot of difference. Uh, it's a, called the naming convention, so what you just do is, if you have a class name, one glance at it, you know what it is. So if you name your components with a dash, two words like photo card, search field, and buy box, and your elements with just one word, like field or action or info, uh, but just by looking at a class name, you're not thinking like, oh, what is this green class name? Is it a, you know, who's using it? How is it being used? So there's no more question of that. If you see a class like action, you know, that's an element. So, yeah, and the last one is called the variant. That one begins by a dash. So you know that just by looking at a class, you know what it's for. There's no more questions. So a variant is basically like a variation of a component when you have, say, a search form. You have a search form that's compact or a search form with a prefix and so on. And uh, the last thing is uh, you make you write your CSS in such a way that you have one component per file. Uh, so basically, if you have like a file like that, and all you have to do is import everything, and that's it. There's no more like figuring out which is the load order of how and this and that, but you just do import component star, and that's it. Anyway, yeah, that's rscss.io. Uh, that's pretty much it, really, guys. So if you guys have any questions. Uh, in practice, it looks kind of like this. Just want to show you as well. Obviously, you can't see it. There you go. Hopefully, that. There we go. All right. So, a uh, couple nice things as well as we have, like, say, um, so this is a component, and this is a element inside it. Uh, this is an element with a variant. So, let's say, for example, I make a new component here. Component name, display block, whatever. And uh, if I save that, my editor will get mad at me. Hindi uh, siya dito, but there we go. See, there's a little emoji there. It says invalid component name. <laughs> so if I fix that, save it, and it goes away. Yeah, so this goes a long way so that we don't have to check anymore how, like, you know, we don't need to code review so thoroughly because we have automated tools checking these formats for us. Same with like, you know, if I do that as well, it's going to yell at me because uh, element should have one word. There you go. Again, there. Anyway, yeah, so that is RSCSS.
Um, there are a couple of others as well, but you know, we were kind of running out of time on a one to eat. So if you guys want to check it out, that's the website, rscss.io. That, that's it. And thank you so much.